Good evening. Welcome back on this journey that we're taking together of 55 days of Christ consciousness. And today we are on day 11, um, inspired by the Christ consciousness deck by Amanda Ellis and illustrated by Jane Delaford Taylor. This is just a journey to get acquainted with the deck and these energies that are within you um, and what that means for you. And um, we'll be on this journey together and hopefully it can bring some more insight to you on your um, walk and path of light that you're in and whatever that looks like to you. And we're all on our unique journey, yet we're all walking it, walking each other home, so to speak, um, as some may say. And I like to think of it's a home and return to the light within you, within us all and return to oneness and recognize that we're all part of each other. We're all part of each other and all in our perfect place in our inner evolution or expansion that you're meant to be in. So if you come across this uh, recording, it's because you're on a certain path for yourself and your heart's opening up, I would imagine. So I'm just gonna shuffle these decks, that's beautiful deck in front of you. We have that beautiful honeycomb and bees. Um, I'm Gina Libido, Soul Inspired Reflections. Happy to be your guide on this journey. <laughs> and the card that shot out is Jesus and Mary Magdalene. Shared mission. Shared mission. How beautiful that is as we're coming into the 777 portal. Today is July 6, 2023, if I haven't already said that. Tomorrow is the 777 portal where we're very much connected to the element of water and it's amplified. This year is a 77 year. Go ahead and bring out the Christ consciousness, Christ light spray, Master Jesus, Ascended Master Jesus, also known as Sananda. And I happen to have Mary Magdalene, the divine feminine energy that we'll bring out with us too. And this card is a number nine, the number nine. So as we sit here together, I guess. <clears throat> just, just invite in that energy and ground for a moment before we dive deeper into this card and its message. Take a nice breath in. Full we'll exhale out through the mouth gently and just full exhale, softening the body, softening the mind, relaxing the face. We'll do that breath three times. Anchoring your light, opening up to the earth the heart of the earth and bringing that light in through your feet. Very good. And opening up your crown and also bringing that energy in through your crown, having those two energies meet at your heart center and circulating it through your body, in and through the body and around your body. Perhaps picture the Ankh if you were here with us on day 10 and um, connecting to your divine energy, your pillar of light. I'm going to take a moment and um, bring up information about the number nine. So I'm going to take a brief, brief uh, moment here. Yeah, it's so perfect on the number nine <laughs> because it is a it's, represents the end of a cycle and beginning of a new cycle. So I thought how fitting that that is coming in for us today with Jesus and Mary Magdalene. As we're coming into the 7-7 portal, which then prepares us also for the energies of the Lion's Gate in August, the 8-8 portal. So shared mission and look at them. It could be, and I'm looking at even at the colors of that pink and magenta recognizing how our higher chakras are opening up and expanding more, expanding more our 
psychic abilities are waking up our energetic abilities are waking up and this is not end to any individual so remember as i keep saying it's allow this it's a humble process become very grounded in this process it's organic it's um that we all go through so how might you be going through this mission even just on the literal sense it's a shared mission and i'm looking even at these flock of birds in the in the sky here and just take that in just take the images the flock of birds even though they're around the clouds right mary and jesus they're both looking in the same direction holding each other it's like a common vision Part of me also feels like, oh, this is a collective or two. It's a collective vision working together. We have those clear waters behind us filled with light. And it's calm and peaceful in that violet sky. And it's also peachy. But you take a moment to see what you feel in this card before I continue. As part of this process, as you become spiritually sovereign, is you trusting your intuition and higher guidance. This is self-mastery. Working with Christ consciousness, your God energies, your higher energies, your I am presence, is you beginning to trust you, connecting with all that is your monad, your oneness with all things, love. No longer seeking outside of yourself, no longer seeing yourself as separate from anyone else in carrying on a shared vision. So for some people, this may even be individually, like maybe you have a divine compliment that's coming into your life. You know, maybe it has a certain energy, like a twin flame type energy that you both have come in to each other's lives at a more harmonic state. So the power within you both is becoming more in sovereign and you know how to blend them together in a complementary way meaning you've done enough of your own healing and awareness and you know how to be yourself your authentic self you know how to be with yourself you know how to communicate with yourself you know how to share a common vision and an independent vision and bring those together in a harmonious way and walk it and walk it okay and then I take a look at those birds and birds work together. They're very specific in their flight formation. And then they um, change, there's that V formation. It's like drafting. If you look at cars when they're racing, they draft swimmers competing. They will draft it off the drag of the other swimmer because it saves energy, right? It saves energy. So you let the one in front do more of the work while the others behind can be in a more relaxed and use less energy while they're, in this case, birds flying. And then they change positions. So then the birds that are resting take the lead. So the birds that were ahead can rest in flight. But when you're in flight, it's not just your wings. You're, you are working with the elements of air. I guess <laughs> my dog was licking me. The elements of air. It's also water. Earth. All those things that change the currents have an impact on the currents. But when you have a shared vision, you can navigate those currents with more grace, with more peace, with more focus. And you know exactly where you're going, right? Birds have that innate compass inside, as do you. And you know exactly where you're going. You know when to migrate. You know when to land and feed. It just, you just do. So part of me feels that comes in with this card is there's a calmness, a peace, a serenity, a groundedness that perhaps you haven't felt before, a safety and a comfort in your relationship, but not only with yourself, but with the people in your life. And not just romantic partners, but this may represent for some of you also a romantic partnership um, 
but it's a life partnership, right? Even if you took the, um, it's really holding the entirety of the relationship sacred because you're seeing the light in each other and you're honoring each other in a higher way than any relationship you have before because you're learning to do that for yourself and treat yourself that way and honor that inner guidance, surrendering to the light within you and living life from that place. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So let's see what the number nine has to say, because this is number nine card and it feels important to go dive a little deeper into the, the numerology a little bit. And nine, as many of you know, or may not know, it's an ending of a cycle. <laughs> Excuse me. It's the ending of a cycle, which means it's the beginning of a new one. So I don't know about some of you, but as I've come up to this week, I myself have felt a new cycle begin within myself, a new expansion, um, other things within me, a deeper letting go of um, old patterns because they are not coming with me to my new life because they're just holding me back. And that's not part of the vision anymore. So number nine it's also known as the universal num universal love. So this is very much about love, this card in relationship. It's an expanded love than what, you know, it's, it reminds me even that Lumerian love that we've been talking about a little bit, whether it's been through these cards or um, on the Instagram posts I've been posting. There's also this level of um, you obtaining more understanding and use and living within universal or spiritual laws. You're recognizing your eternity, and this is all relating to the number nine, your faith, the eternity of the soul, okay? You are infinite. You're working out with karma, karmic means. And that's not bad or negative. It's just what you generate, right? Your choices generate equal and opposite force. So um, you're aligning to your spiritual awakening. You're aligning to your spiritual enlightenment, service to humanity, humanitarianism. Some of you may recognize you are a light worker. You're working with light. And what that, and you're beginning to understand more and more what that means through you on a soul level and how you show up for humanity and your service to the world by being you. So you're leading by example, right? You're leading by example. There's a self sacrifice, a destiny. You're recognizing your own soul purpose as we connect with this number nine in this card. And then there's that soul purpose and mission that you're doing together. And there's always that higher perspective coming in. When you're working with Christ consciousness energy, your I am presence, you're bringing in your higher aspect, the ability to see things from above, like a bird's eye view, recognizing all parties involved, recognizing the, the potential impact of your choices, how they the ripple goes out and will impact well beyond what you even realize, even just one choice, because energetically, once you do something, think something, it goes out. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. But as you're stepping into this mission, like we were saying before, there's an inner strength. You have more accountability, more responsibility, you're trusting your intuition, and your character and integrity, you're able to say no. You're able to tap into both your masculine and feminine energies of creativity and manifestation, and build in bringing bringing in things that that can assist you in in making that creation come to life, right? So then it's no longer a thought; that it becomes real, right? And you're recognizing these things and you're learning how to master these things. And this is very much more in the mastery and union with another. 
right? So you're coming into more self-love, more freedom, your inner wisdom and, and benevolence, your empathy, your ability for compassion, communication and magnetism. It's you're really optimizing your divine wisdom here, your divine wisdom here. And so as we connect with number nine, it's also that sign as we were saying your soul mission. So how might we also connect to your soul star chakra where you can also access your soul wisdom? How might you begin to learn how to access your own Akashic record? for guidance should you need it right because you're evolving and it's we're coming to a point where these skills you'll begin to learn and do with the utmost integrity because you have to hold a certain level of light to be have access to do those things otherwise you seek someone out that knows how to do it and can do it for your highest good until you were able to do that for yourself, right? And I again, I'll share some things about me is that I still meet with a group once a week that we can hold that space for each other. And from time to time and at different times, sometimes we come in, one of us come in with a question like, hey, I need some guidance here. And so we all tap in to what the person is asking and then we share the guidance that comes through. And there's sometimes where you just one of us, we just we just have to listen to one person speak, right? Because you don't want to start talking over each other. You want to keep this round table and just give the space for the channeled information to come through what they're seeing. Because in the conversation, more and more unfolds and more becomes uh, light for that person. And then clarity comes for that person. And all of a sudden, something clicks in. So by no means does this mean when you're accessing your Akashic record that you know it's not about giving you the answer you think you want. It's not about necessarily giving you direction. It's giving you a higher understanding of the situation and how might you move forward in the best way possible and potential lessons and learning there for you as you bring down the wisdom of your soul experiences. So how might you together be doing that? <laughs> Guess. How might you together be doing that in, in a unified mission, right? A unified mission as a shared mission, right? So maybe you have a partner coming into play and you have a shared mission. And there's also, I feel, a collective shared mission and we all have our roles and responsibilities in that. Right. So let's see what the, the deck has to say for us. But first, I'm going to <laughs> invite my dog Gus back in the house so he's no longer barking at the nighttime cats rolling around. So one moment, please, while I do that. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Thank you guys for being so generous and patient. And, you know, I try to quiet him down and everything's quiet when I get started. And then all of a sudden it's like children, they need your attention. And uh, so anyhow, this is part of life, right? So I don't need to hide anything. If this is just me. And this is what happens during the reading sometimes is the, the dogs, the four-legged start to communicate. So back to the shared mission. Look at all that beautiful color in there. So peaceful and loving. So number nine, let's see what wisdom this card has to say for all of us out there. And you'll come to this card exactly when you need it, exactly when you're meant to hear it. Okay. So Jesus and Mary Magdalene shared mission. Our life's mission will often necessitate, necessitate us treating, or excuse me, treading new ground, which can make us feel vulnerable. It may require us to forge a new way, change a previous mindset, or create a new life to go also against 
tried and trusted routes of old. <clears throat> yeah, so there we go. We're talking about that new cycle coming in, the 7-7 seven, seven portal, all that stuff the solstice energy brought in for us a few, like th what, three weeks ago now. And this card is very timely <laughs> because you're different now. You are you are paving your own way, paving new ways, even within uh, communities. Those are changing. They're changing. You're seeing it differently now and you're creating that. So, and this may also be happening for you on the micro level. Like I know for myself and a couple other people I know, they're just like, yeah, I just don't fit in that way anymore. I got to do it this way. I see it this way now. And they're, and really listen to your body because your body's going to tell you what is at ease and, or if it, you're not going in a certain way, it's going to contract, but pay attention to how your body responds and it communicates to you and really trust that intuitive um, sensitivities of the body, really the information of the body, it's all energetics. So anyway, I continue here with the reading. Um, I'll just start again. Our life's mission will often necessitate us reading, treading new ground, which can make us feel vulnerable. It may require us to forge a new way, change a previous mindset or create a new life to go also against tried and trusted routes of old. To take the less trotteth path rather than the familiar takes fortitude, courage, foresight, and vision, and you will be tested, but that is being asked of you always. Be accompanied by support and guidance. Your stamina will be required, and there may be moments of doubt and fear, but staying rooted into what you know you are capable of, as well as focused on the task at hand, will be a testament, not just to your durability, but God's alliance with you. We all need others in our life to help us carry our burdens and load. Spiritual assistance is guaranteed if you request it, but also reach out to people around you. Seldom can we complete our missions and work without assistance from others. Mary Magdalene, Jesus, excuse me, Mary Magdalene, Jesus's closest trusted advisor and partner came together with him to combine their energy so he could lead thousands, generating strength from each other to fulfill the, the set destiny. Remember that whatever you face now, two heads are often better than one and solutions arrive via taking advice and support from those closest to you. Try to include others in your plans and allow them to share your journey with you. The happy bits as well as a hard, as hard places were stum will stumble and fall. Excuse me. <clears throat> Reread that because I'm having issues with my throat today for some reason. <clears throat> Try to include others in your plans and allow them to share your journey with, your, with you. The happy bits as well as the hard places where you stumble and fall. Note those who are loyal and appreciate the role they, they play in your life. No man is an, is an island, not even Jesus. He benefited from the kinship of his friends, family, and loved ones. He did not push it away or feel above the warmth, companionship, or excuse me, companionship and human touch offered. He also understood that to complete his mission, allowed he allowed others to complete their soul contracts too, from Judas to Mary. And that part's important because you have probably already experienced soul contracts. All right. So <laughs> I had to quiet the dog down again. So some of you may have already experienced some soul contracts that got completed and it could come through acts of betrayal. It could come through various things, but those are the things that also propel you back into your life's path of light, your heart awakening, um, things of that nature. So if you, as you're walking this light, this path can, are at that ability now within your self mastery to recognize the, and feel and know and see the purpose in it, um, it's only going to propel you forward. It's, you'll have a greater capacity for compassion and forgiveness and, um, and seeing everything for its purpose, for its purpose, right? Because everything is divinely orchestrated and has purpose. Granted, you have will, you have free will. 
excuse me, you have free will always. Um, but once you get to a certain level in your own, um, sorry, we're going to spray the love and light spray because that's what's got knocked over and wants to be here. And you'll be able to hold that ability of love and light and really, oh, yeah, and really have a deeper understanding of what it is to embody love and light, what it is to embody the Christ consciousness energies. We're going to even bring in the Christ energy here a little bit more into our auric fields and the Mary Magdalene balancing our masculine and divine feminine energies because that is what we are all doing. <clears throat> and then we're coming together, our divine union internally and our divine union with a divine complement or someone that's matching our qualities as we're on this path of light because you both have done enough of your soul work to come into harmonics, okay? Harmonics with yourself, harmonics with the universe, harmonics with each other. And it's a very beautiful thing. So where we left off on the reading his, with Jesus, his mission allowed others to complete their soul contracts too, from Judas to Mary, okay? And they're different soul contracts, right? They're different type of soul contracts, but in the way they're expressed, but they're soul contracts nonetheless, because we'd have the Judas card back in, let's see, one, two, three four five day five was the judas card the judas card those betrayals and those things that occur in life act as a catalyst for us they have the opportunity to act as a catalyst for you and and it propels events forward so if that didn't happen the the events to follow would not have happened and so to be have the ability to really appreciate them and not hold on to the superficial layers of it, of the the human betrayal oh my god and to really be go oh no oh yeah oh my god yeah thank you because that was the biggest catalyst for me right and i know i've had my own experiences that i write about them every now and then but um you have to take time to really I feel, appreciate those events in your life that have been the catalyst. And so oftentimes are the events that we do not like or something happened that was not very pleasant and hard and challenging, but they change you. They change you. And you have the choice to allow it to change you and propel you forward in your life and your heart expansion or, or to harbor the the ill feelings and the things that limit you and then the anger and the resentment it's a choice one will uplift and raise you the other will slowly slowly cause you discord and illness in the body in in your spirit okay so mary as a trusted confidant and the one who knew him best and that's in quotations, one who knew him best, was never far from his side. And her faithfulness and presence helped ground and root Jesus when he walked the earth. She also helped him enjoy and see beauty in the whole human experience. You're asked to think about whom in your life you can rely on. The services of others have given to you and to give thanks for all that have done. If you lack such support in Jesus and Mary to call in the help you need to help you now. Your companion and fellow path traveler can be varied. It could be an animal, a human, an online group, a community, or the presence of loved one passed over. And I feel that we're going to pause there. I feel that is a very, very important reminder for those of you because so many of us get caught up in the twin flame energy or the romanticizing of twin flame energies and compliments you, those can show up your this shared mission can show up through a mother a parent 
business owners. I know business owners that are a mother and daughter and they're, and I have no doubt they have that, that energy to come into a shared union and hold different space um, that focus on it, right? That intimacy is still there, okay? So really let go of this belief that it's a sexual relationship. Yes, some can be romantic. That's not what we're talking about here. We're going beyond all this. We're going beyond the human experience and bringing the soul wisdom and recognizing your soul in a human body, having this human experience through the vehicle of the body while having a soul mission here on earth that you are divinely purposefully here to do. And so nothing will get in that way once you surrender to that. However, that doesn't mean you still don't have the human experience and appreciate it. So the ability to do both, the ability to recognize both is a very powerful way to walk through this earth. And some of us do have that person in our life that reminds us of those things to slow down, right? And to um, really appreciate and kind of like stop and smell the roses, go live the life, Go enjoy the ocean. Go travel to another country. Go. We're here to also enjoy the, this planet and be with it. Imagine if you looked at the planet as a place to actually, we're here to also vacation on while we do our work, right? How is that any different than you work, work, go on vacation? You do your nine to five if that's the kind of job you have, and you take a break and go on vacation. I, for one, just like every single day to have some work and some vacation or leisure time in it. Because to me, vacation is leisure, whatever I'm doing. So build that in. And I actually suggested that to someone today because she has recognizing her own pattern of going on these highs, you know, going on these highs and manic, not eating. And she's like, and she like, in her own words, thrives on it, likes to be in that high sort of state while not really taking care of herself. And then there's the crash, right? There's the high and then the crash, right? The high and then the, it's, it's no different than someone being in high levels of stress, 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 stress for a week, for a month, for years. And then there's the crash on the body. It's no different because all the same things internally are occurring. So the point being is like, why not bring in the moments of the downturn, the downtime, the vacation moments, the stillness into your daily practice regularly, or when you have a project, build that time to just be still, be leisurely, stop and smell the roses. So bringing this back to this card, and soul mission work, remember to enjoy your life. This is also meant to be fun. Yes, it can be work, but the more you are aligned, the easier and in flow that work gets, even though it'll still kind of feel like work and effort, but you are learning to balance and harmonize your body in every way of being, your way of being. You're coming into new harmonics. You are becoming a totally different person in your physicality, in your mindset, in your way of being, because you're anchoring in your Christ consciousness energies. And you're learning how to have a shared mission in your life and how to share your life, whether it's a community, again, like it says, an animal. I know for me, I have a beautiful animal, Gus, and he, no doubt, I guess, yes, no doubt is he on a shared mission with me. And I've had that confirmed over and over again and more recently reconfirmed in Shasta. And, um, and I was excited to have more revealed to me about him and our mission together. <clears throat> <laughs> and he's like, yep. Yeah. And he's like, yep. Yeah. You can't see him. He's little, his head's right here. That's Gus. And um, so anyhow, back to this. So the whole point being, a couple of points here with that statement in this reading of the book. 
is be open to the way the shared mission comes through and who is involved in it. It's not just the angelic realm and ascended masters coming in to assist you. They're all there when you ask, or galactic families. The boots on the ground, as I like to say, the other humans, the animals, the planet, let that show, remember where that is being shown to you, the shared mission. And anything that is not part of that shared mission, I know in my life right now, it's all being like swept out. The more I recommit, because I have to do this all the time, is recommit to my purpose and let go of some old patterning and get back in alignment with the universe and say, okay, here's what I need as I continue my mission. This is what I need to complete it and allow that to come in. And okay, and surround myself with the support system that is going to support me to do that, right? My dog, the people, I, I often talk about my weekly meeting, right? Those types of things. And it just said it verbally in here. Another human, online group, a community, presence of a loved one who has passed over. I'm always talking to different family members that have passed over. This week has been a lot of both my parents. And um, because they're always with you, they don't die. The soul does not die. They leave the vessel. They leave the vessel. So back to the book. See to the geese overhead on the card as symbolism. They highlight which the <clears throat> they highlight which is about taking turns to lead. Okay, we were talked about that in the beginning. They take turns to lead while the others rest. When one gets weary, another takes the place, yet always flying together, just led by a different head. So both learn to delegate and agree to take your turn helping others too. The power of teamwork is hi highlighted, including your earthly and off-planet soul tribe. That's exciting. Mother Earth and the wider universe all pitching in to ensure success. And what did I just say? Earth, Earth can be your companion too. We're working together. It's not even could be. You are working with the elements. You're working with the Earth. She is in you just as much as you are in her and live upon her. Just like you're in the universe and the universe is in you. Where it's all interconnected and interwoven. So to be in harmony with it, into the harmonics and unity as you go on your soul mission, your shared mission, and that becomes more and more revealed to you as you anchor in more light of your being into your embodiment, that's going to be revealed more and more to you, more and more. And it'll show up in various ways. Take time today to focus and align yourself with your path ahead. Who can walk with you and what you require for your next steps? Calling that in, knowing it will come. That's exactly what I was just talking about all week long. My, in sharing my experience and over the past couple of weeks. And calling it in, realigning, recommitting to what it is that you're doing here and your purpose. And to keep your gaze in that direction. Call in your team, however that shows up for you. Just like I was talking about the community call once a week. Um, and this time it was a different person in our group that's like, hey, I need some guidance here. Took on a different role for each other, right? Because at different times we need to take the lead and other times we need to rest. At other times we need guidance. Other times we're guiding. It's a really collaborative way. And the beautiful piece to this group is that all of us are at a level where um, our egos have really been humbled. And we do catch ourselves when, we, when the ego is in play. And we are not afraid to really look at ourselves and say, you know what, A, B, and C I'm struggling with right now, right? 
because it, we're not personally attached to the struggle or recognizing there's purpose in what we're going through as we're coming into the new versions of ourselves, the new version of this planet and bringing that in and supporting those of you out there that are newly awakening to any of these concepts. And many of you don't have the foundation yet to anchor that in and simple, and they're really simple practices, really simple practices like breathing, breathing. I always suggest the, five, the four step box breathing. I'm in breathing in through the nose and you full inhale, hold at the top of the breath of the inhalation for five seconds if you can, and you can build up to five seconds and then you're like, I'm absorbing and you could fill in the blank. So if you want more peace, I'm in breathing peace. I'm absorbing peace when you hold it. And then on the exhale out through the mouth, and you're calming and relaxing your body. I'm expanding peace. And then you hold at the base of the exhalation. I am projecting peace. And then you do that breath in one, one cycle would be three times. And then you do it in multiples of threes. And I feel for some of us, even if we want to tap more into that energy of the five dimensional, you start to do it in, in energies of five. Um, but if you want to stay in that three, six, nine amplification sequence, that is fine too. Trust your intuition on that, on what you need to do in working with those numbers. So we're going to ask those other decks on any guides to assist us on this shared mission. And it feels like your soul mission, perhaps, on coming into the trusting your embodiment. Trusting your embodiment, let's see. Is it trusting, trusting the, trusting the embodiment? Jesus, 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 okay. Yeah, trusting your embodiment, the, this process. So let's see which wants to help us, guide us. <laughs> I'm going to read this to you. <laughs> I kept, kept this out and I think I used it in one of my last readings. A friend of mine sent me this from the group that we meet weekly because she could tell something. And just as she was channeling it on my own, this was totally separate. We were, our phone call was already over and we, this has been a week later. And I'm all, oh yeah, I was recognizing I was really just doing an old pattern. And she's like, oh, that's what I was getting. That's why I sent you this. So she wrote it down and I'm going to share it with you guys for some of you that are letting go of old patterns in this in this cycle of energy and evolution that or expansion that you're going through right now. And she, I love how she bolts it, read this slowly. And this was channeled, I want to give her credit by um, Connie Gallo. Okay. Connie Gallo, G-A-L-L-O. Imagine your mind is like a garden and your thoughts are the seeds. You get to choose what seeds you plant in your garden. You can plant seeds of positivity, love, and abundance, or you can plant seeds of negativity, fear, and shame. You can spend time trying to take care of everyone else's garden, or you can work on making yours beautiful and attract other beautiful people into your garden. What seeds are you planting? And this, to me, ties into that whole thing of a shared vision. You have a shared vision. And now you're calling in the other flock, the other birds to your flock to come into community. And it maybe it's even just one person or an animal or all of it to come into your community that you're creating and being a part of. And you take turns leading, however, this shows up because you're all leaders. And you're calling that in. So remember this. Is it feeding your garden? Is it feeding towards your shared mission? If it's not, 
or if you're not okay with the way it's going, then it's time that says something to you that perhaps it's like, oh, wait, I need to go do my thing, my thing. So we're going to come to the Keepers of Light deck and ask which uh, this is an Oracle deck by, oh, the other one of Kyle Gray. I love his decks. The other one is the light activation, which we used uh, the other day on a separate reading on Instagram. So this deck, we're going to ask what Keepers of Light can support us, support you, um, integrate these energies as you're coming into another level of your soul mission and what that means for you. Let's see. The soul mission. Divine. <laughs> the divine director, intervention and purpose. Intervention and purpose. <laughs> so perfect. The divine director, intervention and purpose. Divine intervention is occurring. Know that you are being guided. Happiness is your purpose. Happiness is your purpose. And as I've said in other times, it, 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 is it bringing you joy? Is it bringing you love? Is it, are you loving what you're doing? And it's not to say we're not going to have moments where like, God, I love what I do, but today I just, my heart's not in it, right? Some of us do that. Do the things that bring you joy. If you want to go be like for me, I want to go be at the beach, go do that. I want to go be at Mount Shasta, go do that. When I let myself do that and stop getting in the way, I, I'm just in joy. I'm happy. I'm not worried about where money's coming from. I'm not worried about, I just trust that whatever I need is coming and it does. And it does. And then on the bottom of the deck, we also have Radha, Soul Flame soul flame and how perfect is that and i'm not this is the first time i pulled her card and it's beautiful radha if hopefully i'm pronouncing that correctly soul flame rediscover a lost part of yourself experience relationship harmony and healing so to get this shared mission perhaps that companionship with the shared soul doesn't have to be romantic remember that let's let go of that deep imprint that it's a romantic relationship. It doesn't mean it can't potentially turn into that, but the focus is the shared mission. The focus is the shared mission and coming into harmonics with that and not letting the romantic relationship interfere, right? So many times that with what happens from so many of us is it all of a sudden when we're in the romantic piece, it's like, like something is owed to you all of a sudden, like you belong to that person and that's far from the truth. No, you shared a very sacred experience with each other that connects you. It can perhaps deepen your bond. There's an exchange of energy that gets intertwined. Right? But perhaps maybe also bringing back your energy after you're intimate with someone, not disconnecting necessarily. That's not what I'm saying, but to, when you stay in your sovereignty and your heart open, you're leading with the heart versus your sacral, the lower aspect of the sacral, right? That's all evolving your light body. Everything you're now operating from is leading from the heart connection, the love connection, not the flesh connection. It's your higher self, your I am your 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 highest aspect of you. So as you're coming into these companionships and this very Lumerian in relationship, you're coming in very heart led, and there's no rush to be in the physical aspect of sharing uh, intimacy and having sex with someone. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking the relationships beyond that beyond the physical and they're very much very intimate very creative highly creative and can really strike in those creative juices as i'll say 
where we are ignited at the sacral and the root. And then we start to take on something else instead of being in the creation energy and go, oh, let's where where's this igniting of our souls? Where's it, this igniting of our souls coming together so we can create? So we can create together. What are we going to create together? Okay, that's the energy we're talking about here. What community am I part of that we're creating something? What person in my life that, what are we creating together for a shared mission? Right? Like I know when I walk with Gus and we bring, it's love. It's to bring love. And with Gus, he's such an amazing buffer that even if someone has some sort of dislike toward me, he breaks that through the love that he is. He breaks that through the love that he is and he'll go right up to someone. He'll just go right up to him. And he lightens them up. It softens them. Because I get it. Like I'm not all people either. They like me or they don't. Sometimes it's kind of black and white sometimes like that, you know, because I do hold a certain way of being and I'm not going to hold it any less than. And they can make up any little story they want about it, but I'm like, this is just me and I'm just not. I'm going to always bring in the higher insight, the higher perspective. Sometimes I may say nothing at all and just observe. You know. Going to bring in the light. And Gus brings in the light for everybody, and it's beautiful. And so we go around and we do that. And it makes it more approachable. People are more approachable with a dog. That, especially a dog that is so cute. <laughs> He's just a cute dog. So he and I do our work together. He and I do our work together. So be open to how that shows up for you, right? And we have the soul flame, which I'll pull the, the card, the book on this one to read more about it, but rediscovering a lost part of yourself. So experience the relationship, harmony, and healing, right? So healing may have to happen for you as you're coming into this shared vision with another person or group. Okay, there's some sort of healing that may have to occur. And I know for me, there's some aspect of me on the pattern. I had to heal a pattern and be okay with the way I was in this group and recognizing, no, no, do I truly want to be offering certain things there or am I fine just doing the sound baths, right, um, that I offer? And I'm just like, you know what? I'm actually just fine doing the sound baths because the other thing was feeling too, us getting too stressed out. And for different reasons. So sometimes when things are removed, the divine director, it's for a purpose. There's an intervention, a divine intervention, and it has purpose. So when you have things or people, um, or you've gone through something, you're like, oh, I can't be there anymore. And you take on a different thing, or you're getting all these synchronicities nudging you and guiding you in a different direction. It has purpose. It has purpose because the more you surrender to the divine order of things, you're going to recognize, okay, thank you for guiding me back this way. I was going to go over here, which you can, but you're always going to end up guided back to the path you're meant to lead, your soul purpose, your soul purpose. So let's go ahead and read on those two cards of the divine director and the soul flame. You know, because a part of it is thinking like even the soul flame is, is your own flame, your own soul, especially as the soul star is getting ignited, your your clairvoyance is getting ignited, your sight, your tele, telepathic abilities, the third eye is really expanding. So many people um, are experiencing the symptoms of that. And, uh, and that can show up in various ways, you know, pinging in the ears sinus um i was having some more higher like respiratory almost like allergy feeling you know and i could still feel it and um so there's been some clearing out there so it's been very interesting so pay attention to that as things are evolving for you here and you're because you're coming into this other harmonics and shared vision and it may be on your micro but i feel it's also a collective shared vision of light and love 
And um, so Rod, uh, we'll, okay, let me see how this book is designed. Rod, uh, Soul Flame, rediscover a lost part of yourself. And it's funny, I just had a client and I said that to her and we were working with the flame, literally a flame on her back and something was drawn there. And I'm like, oh, perhaps you're rediscovering or reigniting a, a part of yourself. So that is very poignant, especially when we have our fire, our Kundalini fire coming from um, igniting within us, right? Um, the Hindu goddess Radha is the divine feminine counterpart and twin flame of Krishna. She is considered to, to represent Shakti, the divine feminine and creative spirit of the universal life force. So that makes sense. Well, I'm talking about sacral energy, that flame, the Kundalini. Um, without the female, the male cannot be created. And if for the reason Shakti is a powerful force that is honored and cherished, Radha is completing the is completely devoted to her partner and illustrates the age-old adage, behind every powerful man is a powerful woman. She is dedicated to support all those, and I'm going to hold this these two cards together, because look at that image, okay? She is dedicated to supporting all those who seek relationship, harmony, and healing. At one point, she learned what it was like to be separated from Krishna. And so she can also bring great healing to those who are suffering for the loss of a partner or a separation. So some of you, as you're coming into your soul purpose and shared vision, some of you might have been separated. Maybe some of you are being separated right now, and that hurts. And being someone that has had that experience, it it can it does hurt. It kind of it almost leaves a terror or a scar between the two of you potentially. Um, but that can be healed, right? I really know that and feel that within myself because um sorry, I had to want to see my arm in the camera. Anyway, um <laughs> So that can be healed, kind of like going back to the Judas card, right? Everyone has that soul contract. And so it might not been, it may have not been meant for you guys to that particular person to come together at this time because they needed, both of you needed the experience to propel you forward in your own soul growth. Okay. So not enough of the individual um, karma had been resolved um, to come together in harmonics. However, that doesn't mean someone else won't come in that place because we're not, it's not just one person. We're all part of the oneness, right? So, and we're talking about energy here, okay? So this is where you got to come back to. It's the energetics and um, people, everyone that's been in our life has been con a contributing soul to get you exactly where you are right now and to be in gratitude for that and bringing in that higher perspective, okay? that higher perspective. Okay. So extend the extended message message here is loving union connection. So you're healing the separation and you're preparing. Some of you are preparing to allow that harmony to come back into your being. Number one, because the relationship with yourself is always number one, but it can happen simultaneously, right? Because this relationship is harmony. It's harmonics. You're sovereign. Each of you are sovereign, meaning you're not in a codependent relationship anymore. You don't operate that way anymore. You know how to meet your own needs. You know how to communicate and speak to your needs and other things and their experiences in a loving way, in a more authentic way. Okay. There's no blame in the relationships. It's just, like, hey, what's our vision here? How do we get back to that? How do we get back to that, right? Um, so loving union connection and relationship harmony are key at this time. It's important to remember, though, that relationships won't make you whole. Only your own love can do that. Well, see, there you go. You now have opportunities to find lost parts of yourself, maybe sensual aspects or capacity to cherish yourself. 
The relationships around you will then begin to reflect the love you have for yourself. Increased romance, love, and opportunities to express divine harmony through love are all becoming apparent in your life. You deserve divine love, and Radha, with her Shakti presence, is here to awaken this loving connection within you. That's really exciting. So how might that connection be? You can ask Shakti to support you in that. And because for some of you, it may also be the romantic connection and partnership as you have a shared vision. Because remember, it can take on all sorts of things. And it doesn't mean it's just one, right? Some of you have shared visions with your partners and you have a community that has a shared vision and things like that. It's not, you're not just in one box, you're multifaceted. And then, but you have a loving partner that loves you and supports what you do. Doesn't mean they have to do what you do. But when you, when you are united, there's just a harmony that occurs and it goes back and forth too. Like you support him just with it, what they do. There's no threat here. There's only partnership and in healthy communication, right? And that that will allow you to foster a good foundation to get through the challenges, the potential challenges that happen in any relationship, whether it's a group, um, even with my dog, right? I have to communicate with my dog, you know, or have, you know, go back to some training or whatnot and get on the same page, right? We got to get on the same page. And um, same thing here, right? You remember your goal, your shared mission, and how to come back reunited. And you come back reunited within yourself, but also have that igniting soul flame energy. That soul flame energy, that Shakti energy is creative. It's just like, yes, let's do this. And so many people create like music, artwork, and it's a very, can be described as very sexual or sensual energy. Um, and it so easily can lead to the romantic relationships. We see that happen a lot in where, yeah, the entertainment industry, a lot of creative energy, but it lacked the heart connection for many. So it fizzles out here. We're talking about the heart connection too. We're talking about the heart connection where these are longer lasting relationships and the way you go in and out of them are very, very sacred. It's a Lumerian energy as well on the way you honor the relationship because the heart connection is coming first remember you're sovereign in these so you you you're going to draw the partners that can be able to be uh it'll just be different and it'll be the igniting you're in your mastery of what that energy is and how it runs through you and when to physically act on it when you share having an intimate sexual experience with someone. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we'll go to the divine director. So it can be a very exciting time for some of you as you connect with this shared vision of Jesus and Mary Magdalene energy, that divine masculine and feminine coming together and bringing their forces together. And um and you both ground each other and uplift each other without taking on each other's burdens, per se. Let's see, divine director. I think he's going to be over here. There he is. So the divine director, and how does this relate to the shared vision energy, the intervention and purpose, intervention and purpose. So along your path, you may get intervention because it's bringing you back to your purpose. So um divine intervention is occurring know that you are being guided happiness is your purpose right so if you're miserable in something a job why do you want to be in it for 30 years and be miserable and wait to be happy this was another theme in my day today with someone else another client and um, we had a shared work background, right? She's still in the field and I am not. I do this service work now and um, and had been for a very long time, even in transition from careers. And um, And I just said, yeah, I just never understand when people are unhappy and then they stay to stick it out for retirement. And this isn't a judgment on their choices. I'm all, but they've stayed in the discordant energy so long and we're so unhappy that once they retire, they don't even get to enjoy their retirement because many 
pass on within a few years. Right. And I told her, she's like, she mentioned, she said she thought about me the other day because she thought that was really courageous of me just to leave it. And I said, you know, the choice was my health or a paycheck. So there was really no compromising anything. My health was always number one. And so it was just that simple to leave it. And I let everything else just go and trusted that I'd be taken care of in the right jobs or right opportunities, I'll say, will come their way. And they have, and they are. And I'm in that place of doing my shared vision, reigniting some aspect of myself and reigniting my own inner soul flame and an aspect of myself that wants to be expressed, that needs to be expressed in a harmonious way now, in a way that I get to do. So sometimes things happen because it's a divine intervention for your highest good. And we don't always see that at the time, but if you remember that and pray and connect, you that's a resource for you to get through that challenging time because sometimes divine intervention is not always um fun that people go through that dark night of the soul other times it's like oh my god i was totally protected in that moment thank you right it's easier to receive it so here we go about the divine director is a facet of the heart of the creator According to new thought teaching, this energy is merged directly from the God's divine plan so that we can access it and understand on a deeper level what will support your true function. Okay, divine direction. I love it. Your shared mission and divine director to what's going to support your true function, which is to be happy. Okay. Okay. The divine director works directly with angels and in particular guardian angels so that they can fulfill their role of supporting the earth and all of her people. Right now, your angels are remembering you that your divine purpose on earth is to remember love and do what makes you happy. Do what makes you happy. The extended message, divine intervention is taking place at this time. What is occurring in your life is providing a real learning curve for your soul. You are becoming aware of a sense of purpose in your life. It gives you a sense of joy. It's something that brings you pleasure rather than something you have to work for. Know that your career can complement your purpose, but not define it. Your career can complement your purpose, but not define it. That's a really important thing to hear and take in. It's something that brings you pleasure rather than something you have to work for. Yeah. But the path you are on at this time is right. And the universe is encouraging you to move forward. That's encouraging you to move forward. So just kind of like I was describing, certain things have left. I created new boundaries for myself, got realigned, recommitted to my purpose. So those that are not in aligned and that are not really, um, not saying that they're not doing their purpose. It's not what I'm saying because everybody is. It just wasn't aligned with my purpose. And I want to draw in that which is aligned to my purpose those peoples, those communities that are aligned with my purpose, right? Because I'm also reigniting a deeper part of my soul that wants to come forward, wants to be created, wants to have love, be loved, be expressed. And maybe this is even calling in a partnership of a relationship of some kind. It might, I don't know for sure. Hi guys. And, um, that remains to be seen, but I know what I'm calling in. You know what you're calling in and you can work with Radha where you're igniting that, the divine director to support you, ah, to support you in coming into these harmonics for your shared mission, for your shared mission and be open to it. If it becomes up with a, um, you know, a community of some sort 
like I said, I have Gus and he goes with me most places and he's wonderful. And you guys hear him in the background. And we're going to call on one angel card to see if an angel wants to give you any guidance today as well. All right. And this is the Diana Cooper Archangel Oracle card deck. And that's a lovely deck, too. She puts out some nice work also. She does self-mastery as well. And uh, ascension energies, which is probably why I'm drawn to it, because I, I love that's how I started. It was all ascension energies and with some guided meditations that I was drawn to get and courses that I'm like, oh, hey, yeah, nice. Sacred flames. What's that? Yes. Oh. Angel Zapkiel. Okay. Carry the violet flame. Okay. What's that have to do with your shared mission? What does the violet flame have to do with your shared mission? We have Archangel Zapkiel and a clump fell out. A shared mission. It's time for you to fly with Archangel Bakpi. Bok Excuse me if I can't pronounce these correctly. It's time to fly. Listen to your intuition. Ooh. Archangel Mario. Oh, pretty. Work with pure love. It's all manifesting for your highest good. And Archangel Mallory. This is the first time I'm meeting her. Remember who you are. Take action when you are ready. So this, all this is remembering who you are. When you're in these relationships, you are learning who you are. Your soul is opening up more and more. You're connecting to your divinity remembering that you're a being of light your source energy you connecting with the god within yourself as you anchor in and allow these christ consciousness energies not just to only infuse into your being but also awaken up within you awaken up within you and so the violet flame is a really powerful tool of alchemy when you work with violet there's also gold in here anytime i transmute and release things i'm calling in that violet fire even I can clear a space with it. I can work with clients with it, but I re but I fill my body with that golden light once I've done the release and the alchemy piece too. And that's really important to bring that back in. So it's transmuting, right? The violet flame helps to transmute energies. So do some of you are also going through a healing process to a healing process. Sometimes it's always happening anyway. I feel it's um, simultaneous, but Sometimes the healing might take more precedent. Oh, and then we feel like, oh, okay, I'm finally there. Then I can move forward, right? So violet flame, call in the violet flame as you connect inward with whatever it is that you might be working on that may be um, in the way or needs healing for you to come into um, these shared missions with others, right? And with yourself, your divine union with yourself and the Christ, the embodiment of you, your essence, the embodiment of your essence, right? So then we have um, the Archangel Bokpi, okay? Because it is time for you to shine. It's time for you to trust your intuition, right? And that's part of what this soul work is. You being that bridge, trusting your higher guidance, trusting your gut instinct, your intuition, your instinctive centers of the gut and heart and higher self and higher mind, okay? So call on them. And then we have um, Archangel Mario to man. Yeah, because all this is happening for your highest good says you step in through life with pure love. As you, like I was saying, these relationships are made through love. They're forged through love in the light of God. And um, that is within you and that you are directly connected to. And that's a very different way to connect in your communities and relationships and what you're creating is through love versus that creative energy that so many of us have experienced where we're just straight, go straight into the sexual energy of that. And that's the only expression by no means. Is that the only expression when you go through love in that creative energy, that Shakti energy comes up through your body. And then you create from the love space or you bring that love down in to the sacral. And it means like, hey, we're going to create this song together. Let's connect our hearts and create something beautiful in a duet or whatever. 
okay? No different than a community. And the connection between people is palpable. And so when you have two people come together that have so much love and they know how to embrace each other, it can, people can assume that you guys are sexually involved and partners in a romantic way. And it could, and it's so far from the truth. I remember having really good friends and so many people would lay that imprint on us. And it actually interfered with our friendship and our friendship ultimately became broken for different, partly that reason and others. But that's how powerful outside influence can be when people don't understand and they're putting a lower vibrational imprint onto your connection. And then all of a sudden it influences you like, oh, maybe we do have, maybe that is it. Maybe we are romantically to be involved. And it's like, no, sometimes you just have so much love. There's adoration there. And it's whether you, it doesn't matter if you're male and female, it doesn't matter your sex, but how are you coming together to, to create in your life, build relationships of harmony, shared vision. And that's pure love. Okay. The rest will follow, right? The rest will follow. And that's a big one for people to learn that they're not leading with the, so many people just think that, oh, we got to see if we're sexually compatible. That's a very old way of going through relationships. Very old way. Um, I'll say an immature, it doesn't, hasn't had a maturity yet in your evolution and your energetics right? And you, perhaps there's healing there too on how your one-on-one -on -one relationships are and how you navigate through them. And this, I don't say this through any judgment at all. Um, okay, then we have Archangel Mallory. Remember who you are because take action when you are ready, right? Because so many times we got to, you got to just know that you're ready to, to step forward. And only you know how to do that. But make sure you do step forward and take action, right? Because it reminds me of that movie Onward. It's an animated film. Hopefully some of you have seen it and I love it. Um, and it's two brothers. They'd lost their dad when they were young. And it's, a, it's animated film. And so the younger brother doesn't know how to drive yet. And, and they're in this quest. They go on this quest. And the somehow the older brother gets shrunk and um, he needs to guide his younger brother how to drive the van that they're in. And they're going onto a freeway and he's like, but I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Right. And freaking out. And then there's big semi trucks and horns. And as those of you know, that have learned to drive, it was very intense going on the freeway for the first time. And so the older brother's like, you'll never be ready. And, and hits the, his foot jumps on his brother's foot to accelerate the car and that was the nudge he needed just to get through that little level of fear because he always could do it right so it's just getting through that first level of fear and I and it seems to me that when we're moving forward it's because or we're limiting ourselves it's because we we want to be perfect we want to be perfect and just trust that it'll be just fine. And if say you're teaching a class or something and you, you'll you know what to add next time, but people will still get a benefit of what you're teaching. And um, part of me feels like I'm talking to myself on this and um, just do it. Just take whatever step for it because all it's going to do is make you better for the next step. In the next step and don't worry about making mistakes because that's where you learn that's where you learn so that's all we have for you today those are the angels that you can guide you in um <laughs> in coming into your shared vision and it's really that divine union in yourself that then begins to as you make that soul call your soul tribe you're igniting your own soul aspects, solar, your light, the sun. There's something about the sun in this too, because I'm thinking solar was coming out of my mouth, your solar aspects. And look how bright this is right here. So 
that's all we have to you today on day 11 and enjoy this uh new version of yourself that's coming through and really your soul being asked to come through and be expressed more fully and more integrated have a really blessed night i'm gina libido soul inspired reflections <laughs>